you're in the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. This is Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host, CJ SKN. And that's just a guy live in Tourette debuted in 2007 with a soundtrack for an aneurysm. Coming in the following year, 2008, Cliff on Nose Dream, taking a break off, coming back to 2015, arriving. Following year, 2017, Emotional Terrorism. 2019, Songs in the Key of Eight. Newly released song, Sorry Not Sorry, 2021. But no further to do. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to High Skull. Thank you for taking the time to come and let us uh, cover you with this um, epic story that you got on your hands. Um, let's get straight into this, High Skull. Um, describe your music from the beginning. Describe your music from the beginning. Let the audience know that have heard you or just barely tuning into this uh, podcast, <clears throat> let them know what they're going to expect in your first debut album. Well, um, you know, I really come from a folk background. That's when I really started making music back in my 20s. Uh, and it migrated into pop music, uh, then into kind of soft pop with the Judy Bats. And basically what I'm doing now, uh, I work with two, sometimes three uh, great people in the studio we really don't have any parameters for what we do. So I would just say that it's just pretty pop music for the most part. That's amazing, man. Um, so let me ask you this. How did you form the band? <clears throat> well, I was kind of, um, after the Judy Bats thing, I didn't do music for years. I was just wasn't going to do music anymore. Then I was making some music with these uh, twins, and we it took forever. It took two years uh, to come to get that uh soundtrack for an aneurysm done and uh after that i didn't do music for a while and i just ran across some uh john todd baker and greg comer we just got to talking and we hey do you want to get together and start you know i said i started writing songs again and we got together in the studio and hit it off real big and uh so yeah, with that arriving record, that's when I really full steam started uh, us us doing music together. All right, man. Um, okay, so let me ask you this. Um, what inspired you to do music, and what was the creative process creating that first um, debut album? Well, um, actually, those songs were actually written in conjunction. The three of us wrote all of those songs, the, the soundtrack for an aneurysm. We wrote those together over just a, a period of time. Uh, what makes things different now is starting after that record, I didn't know how to play guitar. So I bought a guitar book, which I still have never opened, and uh, I still have no idea what chords I'm playing. And I write songs now. It's completely by ear, and I show them to other people. And uh, really, the, when the big deal was, is me learning how to play guitar, and really um, I forced myself to sit and practice uh, for 30 minutes every night, and uh, a month later, I had written 14 pop songs. So that's that's how that happened. Wow. So um, so let me ask you this: Before you debuted your album, have you ever done any live performances or done any cover songs or any of that kind of sort? Or just cut your album, or was it all just? <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. I was on Warner Brothers in the 90s from 1991 until uh, late 1994, 95. Um, I was, uh, you know, in a band called the Judy Bats, and we got we were pretty big on college radio. Toured the country for four years, um, and then I just couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> so yeah, you know, a lot of live performing, and really the main, the, my real downfall with with that Judy Bats thing was uh, I couldn't get on a tour bus anymore. I couldn't the 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 touring and playing a show every night and not getting up until one o'clock the next day uh, it was just not not something I was. It was fun the first year, and it was not fun the second year. The third year hated it. Fourth year hated it enough to quit doing it. So you took a 
took about like a 12 year break off from music, right? Oh yeah, well, I was just not gonna ever do music again after that. Wow. So um, so so I guess the touring part, doing so much tours, like um, let me ask you this. Um, back in the nineties, um, what were the what big venues did you guys play at? What size venues? Yeah, size or, or, or any favorite venue that you have. Oh, you know, so much of that blends together. There was a big, there was a big 2000 capacity theater. I'm trying to think of the name of it in Chicago. Chicago was one of our biggest markets. Um, and we would sell that out two nights in a row when we played there. Played a lot of big outdoor festivals. Let's see, played played with an in excess, uh, the Goo Goo Dolls. We did some touring with um oh crap what was evan dando's band that song it's a shame about ray um we did we toured with them did some shows with the replacements who played but yeah there, there was some you know big you know ten thousand people outdoor things we would do occasionally that's amazing let me ask you this um what was it like performing for like your first time performing oh my first time performing even here in knoxville i remember that um I thought I was going to pass out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's terrifying. And I will tell you, playing live is, is terrifying every time. I, it, I mean, there's always stage fright. You're always scared every time. It, I, I, maybe there are some people that just get up there and get used to it, but uh, not me. All right. All right. So um, let me ask you this. Um, coming back from that long break, um, what was the response to your debut album, and um, what was one of your, your what was the most inspiring uh, song off that album? Um, gosh, it's been a while. Um, I'm trying to think. Was this, was the song your touch on that album? Uh, on soundtrack for an aneurysm? Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not looking at the soundtrack right now. Um, hold on. I know that's a listen. song that I, I've always really, really liked. Oh no, that's. There's a song called Your Touch that's never been released. Forgot about that. Oh, really? oh yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, soundtrack for an aneurysm. Um, all I'm seeing right now is um, uh, oh, you have to buy this. Oh, well, you know what? I'm on your website, not on Spotify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. Um, soundtrack of aneurysm. Um, Your Touch is on there. Yeah, Your Touch. Uh, Beneath the Garden, Life, a Vampire Night Remix. Yeah. I'm I really, uh, Your Touch and Like a Vampire are two songs that I still really like when I hear them. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. Did you do any music videos to that album? Uh, no, I didn't. I only started, I only did videos just recently here with, uh, Douglas Stewart McDaniel. With, All right. uh, yeah, when I, when I did the videos, uh, we started doing videos with, um, Emotional Terrorism. Oh, okay. So that was, uh, that was 2017. That's, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, all right. Let's go right here. All right. So, um, 2008. What was it like dropping your first album and then coming back and then dropping another album the following year? Did you expect this to happen, or was this something that um you already had enough songs that you just uh made another album? No, I just uh you know when I write I I just keep writing. You know I've got a new I've got a new song now that's done. I have four songs that are finished that I haven't even released yet, uh, two of which are already mastered. Um, now, yeah, yeah, it's just when, when I get in the mode to do something, I just do it all the time. It's just, I just sit and, you know, bang around guitar for at least 15 minutes to an hour every night, you know. All right, so um, can you elaborate on Stick of Nothing? On what now? Can you elaborate on Stick of Nothing? This, oh, That's... this is, this is nothing? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, off of, uh, Cliff Flip on those rings. Um, the uh, song "Sick of Nothing." Oh, "Sick of Nothing." <laughs> that, that that's just me sitting around, just belly aching about all the things that get on my nerves about pop culture. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that song in years. All right, all right. So, um, so this song was basically um telling that um uh, about pop culture, how you weren't you weren't up to date to it, or was the sound just going off of what it was supposed to be sounding like? Well, I um I know I wrote the uh the chords for that. I remember I wrote the chords for that first. And this is what happens with me a lot. Then I'm sitting there and I flip through one of my little pads sitting there and 
I see a line that I have written down and I saw, I just had that line written down. I'm so sick of nothing. And, uh, it just goes from there. That That's the way I usually always work is I come up with the music first and the melody. And then there's just some line that I've been saving or it just pops up and I write the whole song around that line. All right. So this uh this album was written on a thrift store acoustic. That's thrift right. Store I, acoustic, right? That's, <laughs> I did not have an electric guitar until about four years ago, mainly because I'm wow. cheap. And now I have that same guitar. I have a Telecaster that I bought used. I have a $50 practice amp and I have a keyboard from Walmart. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my writing thing. That's it. That's amazing. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, okay. So, all right. So you write this album on a thrift store acoustic. All right. All right. So <laughs> I drank a bunch of cheap wine, changed on my guitar and all of these fellas came out tumbling out. Yeah, that's that's uh, the truth. That's just that's how I that's how I work. So, I don't even have any guitar pedals. So this was out of out of in a bar or what, this was what in your basement? Yeah, I got a basement garage at my house. That's where wow. I, that's where my stuff is in my little corner. So, let me ask you this: um, How did you come up with the name Tip on Those? <clears throat> there was a bar called the Long Branch that I was hanging out a lot then, in um, and of course. I'm a little older, um, and there were all of these people coming in that, you know, just the whole tattoo and piercing kind of crowd was starting to kind of drift, drift into that place. So I happened to be at Party City, and I saw this pirate, little pirate toy thing for dressing up like a pirate. So um, Josh was a bartender then. So I got where I would, uh, whenever I would come in there and hang out, I would take a little plastic, um, one of those little rings that looked like a real nose ring, and I would wear it every time I came into the bar. All right. <laughs> so, um, so doing um doing this project in 2008, right after you just dropped your debut album, Orange Grove, and did you do any tours with this album? Um, no, no, not really. That this, oh, we, no, we might have played a couple of shows. Yeah, we played in Nashville some. A couple of times we may have played in DC once, but really, I, my my main interest is is writing and recording, and and touring is not anything I'm interested in. Oh, okay, okay. So, all right. So we had a bad experience in the '90s with the uh, touring, with the uh, first band that you were with. So, leading up to your, um, would you say this is your solo gig right now? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 solo. Yeah. So um all right so so this time come around there will be no performances from here on out. Mm -mm. No, I, I mean maybe, but it's not anything that really interests me. And I, you know, when I do sporadically perform, people just they ask me, they say, why in the hell do you not just like do this all the time? <laughs> and because uh, I've had some really good bands, you know, and I, I'm I'm pitch perfect. Um, but a lot of people say that, you know, I'm, anything I do is always better live. It's really just life. Uh, you know, I, I work, I'm a real estate agent. Um, I knew, knew it being a real estate agent before that I was in a uh, high end, uh, retail furniture management. And, uh, yeah, I just, it's not, there's so much work all that time that you spend rehearsing to play four or five live shows to me is time that you could be spending writing and recording new songs and that's really what my focus is on is what i really enjoy okay so all right so we took a a break from 2008 all right we come to 2015 um was did you anticipate this album before you dropped the album of arriving or was this something that you um your fans just wanted and they just want to hear you uh do your well, when I did Arriving, um, I had already recorded four or five of those songs, and then I had a job change, and I didn't do music for about a year and a half, and then I got together with John and Gray and wrote another six or seven songs. So some of those songs on Arriving are recorded with uh, Tim 
Tim and Susan Lee. And then the rest of the songs, if you look at look at the, the actual CD, are recorded with uh, John and Gray Comer and myself. So that was a it basically that that came out of an unfinished project, and I decided to start doing music again. And those five songs that I had recorded were already so good that we just went ahead and used them. All right, all right. So um so this um 2015 arrival coming back from this um long uh, I, I won't say quite so long but short little period of time um. What did it feel like this time around? Did it feel this was something that this project that you wanted out was more you wanted a different way of sound or was it the same sound that you uh, been putting out? No, it was a different sound. Things that when I got together and started making music with um, John and Gray, uh, like I said, we don't really have any parameters on what kind of music we do. So that's the thing about that album is. Some of the songs, it's very uh, eclectic because my writing and my recording with Susan and uh, Tim was very different than with John and Gray. All right. So um, one of the songs off the album, Love Lost, can you elaborate on that and give the audience a little detail on what they can expect from this song? Oh, Love Lost? Love Lost. Um. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what to say other than that. I still think that song really holds up. Um, I think I veer into the territory of Blue Eyed Soul a little bit on that, uh, which I do on occasion. Uh, I just think that's a, a real, that's just a, a, a nice, short, sweet, well-crafted, kind of bitter little pop song. Yeah, yeah, okay, so... Um, give us a little bit of detail on Deep Appreciation. Um, Deep Appreciation? Well, one of the things when I started writing music again, which was a huge hurdle for me, because when I was on Warner Brothers, um, there was a lot of silent pressure for me to come out. And that's not anything I was comfortable with then. I didn't want to be known as a gay artist. <clears throat> so really the biggest deal about me coming back to writing music is I, I, all of my songs are about dudes. Um, and that song, now what song is it we're talking about again? Sorry. Deep Appreciation. Deep Appreciation is basically, Deep Appreciation is probably one of the dirtiest things I've ever written. It's about, um, somebody that likes to have a certain sexual thing done to them that I'm not going to say it. It starts with an S. Oh, okay. All right. So you uh, may never listen. You may never listen to the song the same way again. Okay. Um, as for the audience out there, so um, we're just giving you detail on the man's music and how he um writes it and how and how he expresses it. You know, music about feelings and you know, um, uh, want to let you know that go to iSkullMusic.com and you can and, hey they can purchase all the physical uh CDs on on um your website right yeah yeah I still I still do have I have physical CDs as well okay yeah yeah all right so let's go on to the next song half full uh I wrote that that's your, about a relationship I had with someone that had broken up and it happened right at about the same time uh that my mother died. And that's a close, that's probably about as close as it's ever come to me writing a country song. Oh, so, uh, wow. So this, this uh, song uh, made a turn onto like a country feel, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember because my mother had passed away and I had gutted my kitchen and I remember I wrote that song sitting in my gutted kitchen. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, um, 2015, would you say that was one of your biggest years? Yeah, I would say so. Well, really, 2017 also, when I, you know, when I started, you know, when we decided to make some music videos, that was a lot of fun. Okay. So, um, let's get into 2017. So, 
coming in 2017 emotional terrorism. Um, man, who did the cover art to this album, and uh, what made you come up with this um CD? Like, is this full of emotion, or is this something that um you held in and you want to get out? Yeah, no, it's the, it's it's that's the darkest collection of songs that that I've ever done. Um, the the um the cover art is a still from a video that we did um for the song I Want More Life. And George Middlebrooks does my artwork. And I really don't give him any direction. I, I just tell him I need artwork. And he does such an awesome job. Um, but yeah, I had just, I, I have uh, called myself an emotional terrorist before. And um, I, I just like the idea of having, having a collection of songs called emotional terrorism, mainly because those songs are so dark. Okay, so um, how many songs was on this album? I think there was 13. I think there's 13 on there. Yeah, okay. So um, who, who was the single that you released uh, for this album? That was um, I Want More Life. That's what we, we did that video. Oh, okay. So uh, can you elaborate on how the how you, how you wrote the, what the song is about and um, give the audience a little bit of, um, like, what, what can they expect from it? Well, it's... The song is about, I guess, there's something very, like, gothic about the song, just because of the chords that I'm playing. Um, it's really inspired by a, a line from the, the original Blade Runner uh, movie. Um, there's the, what were they called? The replicant, um, Rudger Hauer, that Rudger Hauer played. Um, there's a point when he is about to expire or die, uh, when he says, uh, what does he say? My life has been like tears cried in the rain. I have that in there. Um, but it's, that song is really just about death and, and wishing that you could be here longer. All right. All right. So, so this is the song that you dropped the, a visual too. So, is this visual on YouTube? Uh, yeah, yeah. You'll see. Uh, there's there's a video for um, I Want More Life, um, and then there is. Uh, God, there's a video for what's the other video that we did? Uh, we did a video for Knoxville Town. Um, we did a video for. Gosh, there's another song. But there, if you go if you go to YouTube and type in high school videos, <clears throat> oh, there's a video for uh, the most outrageous thing is there's a video for Alexander Bear 69. All right, all right. So this is on your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and it's H uh, E I S K E double L, correct? Get, correct. All right, man. So um, tell us about like we used to, I think this is the first album off the uh, soundtrack. Yeah, um, like we used to. Like we used to is a song about um, being in a terrible relationship with someone that you're out of. But now you're in a relationship with someone that's very nice, but you still think about the terrible relationship. Oh, okay. All right. So this is for all, all the people that... Uh, Struggled in relationships and that sort, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, man, um, you had a lot of songs, man, and I just want to say, man, congratulations on how big of a catalog you got because, man, you literally went from the '90s to a a band touring all around the world with Warner Bros. You know, and right. to come back to 2007 and to put your first debut album out, man, I just want to give you congratulations on that. Thanks. So, um, what's one of your favorite tracks off Emotional Terrorism? Um, probably like we used to. Used to? I, All right. I just like how big and thick, and um, I had Jason Ratliff, <clears throat> who's an amazing drummer, come in and do the drums on that. And I told him, I said, I just want you to go batshit crazy. I want angry drums on this. Uh -huh. All right. 
So, um, wow, man. Um, 2017. This was released on Friday the 13th in October. You did that? Let's just say that again. Got interrupted. And um, <laughs> Friday the 13th of October 2017. This album was released. Yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> this is a this 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 is uh I don't know I don't know if you planned this. Yeah, I did. I, I everything, did. <laughs> everything yeah. right here fits together. And um, let's talk about Mr. Yesterday. Oh, that's just something real short and sweet that um, that's jazz. I somehow yeah. found some jazz chords, and that's what's happened. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this. Um, listening to these different variations of music, like you said, you have no perimeters. What is it like for the audience to hear what you got coming? Is it uh suspenseful like is it um is it like the anticipation what's it like well you're never going to hear um you're never going to hear me just doing the same thing over and over and over again that's something that has never interested me i do know here lately i've really gotten into um doing some really complicated uh three-part harmonies um on songs that it, I still can't believe that I, I still have a three octave range. I have a new song that may be the darkest thing I've ever written called Old Dead Black Roses for You. And there are these falsetto three part harmonies that I don't even know how I hit them. I actually had to sit down for a while at, during doing it because I, my, I was getting lightheaded. So you're going to hear a lot of things that have a lot of really, um, Really, really pretty and, and difficult harmonies. All right. So recently. Oh, wait. No, no, no. You know what? Matter of fact, let me ask. Uh, will you uh, take us through? Because I probably have. I'm not sure if I did. But um, was there any singles that I missed that you dropped in during them years that we just covered? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I think that's you. you've covered all of them. All right, I'm just making sure because I don't want to miss anything, and then um, uh, and I look back and I'm like, oh man, I should have said this, you know. So <laughs> I'm just trying to cover everything of what you got going on because, man, you have an amazing story, and uh, I think it's wonderful that uh you just finally tell your story, you know. And and I'm not sure if you ever did an interview or anything, but for us, this is something spectacular because you got someone that's been doing this for a minute, and with all the history you've got. I'm glad that we we get to share this with the whole audience. So big thank you to you. Well, thanks a lot. All right. So um, 2019 songs in the key of eight. Mhm. Give us the backstory of this album. Well, this is that's just I, I was just continued to, to write a bunch of songs and we got done. I can't remember how many songs were even on there. We got done. We were I was just gonna do. I was going to do a five song EP and then I wrote another song and I wrote another song and another song. And then that just turned into that album and really songs in the key of Ace is really kind of making fun of me. Uh, of course, it, you know, it's a pun on my last name starting with H, but it also, you know, there is no key of H and it's kind of making fun of the fact that I still have no idea what chords I'm playing on the guitar. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, down in the H. All right, that's uh. Okay, so what was the first single off this um album? Oh gosh, I'm trying to think which one we played the most of. What is the first song on that on that album? Uh, right now it just shows um. Well, I'm on your website right now, but what I'm seeing is uh Knoxville Town. Is a video. Yeah. Yeah, Knoxville Town. Yeah, that's the one that we sent that we sent to radio, and that's the one we did a video of. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So. Um. So this is uh where you're from, and this is something that you put together for your hometown. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's filmed. It's filmed here in Knoxville. That's amazing. All right. So um, have you performed that song there? Have Have we? No, I have not played live since we recorded that song. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, yeah, we already discussed that. You weren't going back into that uh, stage no more, right? Right. Okay, so, man, 2019, down in the 
E of A release Friday, Friday, April 19th, 2019. Wow. So, this is your last album that you released. You haven't released any more albums, but we're going to get into your singles here just in a bit. But with this album, man, um, what, 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 what kind of sound were you shooting for for this album? Well, <clears throat> I think things got bigger and lusher um, on the last album that I did. Um, some of the songs have some of the songs have like 50 tracks on them if you count every little thing. Uh, so there was a huge attention to detail on on, on that one. Uh, really paying a lot of attention to it. There's a lot of ear candy. That album really is made to be listened with earbuds because there's so much panning and small, interesting, intricate things that are going on in it. Okay. All right. So, um, so after dropping Knoxville Town and doing a video to that uh album, was there any other uh, song on there that you favorite the most? Um, uh, it's everything. I like the song. It's everything on there a lot. All right, all right. So, um, it's everything. Can you tell the audience a little bit of backstory on the creative process of this song? Um, so I was sitting outside. I was walking, and it's it's kind of exactly what happens in the song. Um, I was walking in the rain. And bumped into some dude, and for some reason, I kind of turned around, and he had stopped and was checking me out. And it just completely weirded me out, and I just kept right on walking. <laughs> oh, that but, it's everything, right? Yeah, and so then uh, I got, you know, so later I got to thinking, you know, about all the different scenarios about what could have happened if you'd actually talked to that person. Uh, all right, so, all right, um, we're gonna get into your single. But you, I know you, I know you. Heard it, but it's so, um, wow, 2019. So this is man, you've been in the game, but going on 20 years, man, right? Well, actually, no longer than that. The Judy Bats got signed to Warner Brothers in 1990. So that's how long I've been doing music. 30 years, 31 mm -hmm. years. Yeah, it's a long. Man, a long career, man. What what keeps you driving, man? Well, it's just, you know, people have different things that they do. Some people play video games and the people have different hobbies, you know, and I, I go to the gym every day and I write songs. That's just what I do. It's just part of my routine. I'm a very routine person. Let me ask you this. Thirty years ago, would you uh think you would still be recording right now? Oh, no, I would have never thought that. I, I really thought when I stopped making music the first time, I would never go back to it. Wow. All righty, man. So what is it like? What was it like growing up in Knoxville, man? Oh, I didn't grow up in Knoxville. Uh, I came to Knoxville to go to college. I grew up in uh, Chattanooga and in central Florida, right, rural central Florida. All right. So, um... Man, how old were you when you decided you wanted to do music? Um, I started writing folk songs with Ed uh, Winters in college. I was I was older. I was 25 when I started messing with music. I was 29 right. when I got signed to Warner Brothers, and our manager lied and told them I was 25. I didn't find out about that for years. So were you a singer in that band? Do what now? Were, were, you, were you the uh, vocalist in the band? Yeah, I was the lead and, singer. Uh, and and you were the songwriter too, right? Well, yeah, I, I wrote, yeah. I wrote with them, but I never played guitars. It's not like anything was solo. So they already had a guitarist, right? Yeah. So what kind of like uh, genre of music was that? Was that like more of a pop too? Yeah, it was college. It was college rock, college pop. All right. All right. So um, how are you different from other musicians? Oh, I don't know if I'm that different from other musicians other than the fact that I don't write songs about girls. All right. All right. You want to say that the style of music that you put out is way far different from any other people's music. Like you still have that same pop feel, that same, you know, um, per, well, you say you don't, um, you're not based on your perimeter. So, I yeah, mean, that makes you a lot of difference. 
you know? Like, yeah, and that, that probably does make my music different in that, I, you know, I'm not going for any type of genre. Okay. All right. So we can probably expect a country album, right? <laughs> well, <clears throat> you'll never hear a country album from me because <laughs> I have a, such a beef with country music and especially with alternative country music. Um, I grew up when I was a child, my dad owned trailer park. So I come from the trailer park and I started training horses when I was 11 and trained horses until I was 30. So when you have anybody that's trying to pretend that they're, they are country or anything like that, it really gets on my nerves. It's very inauthentic. Okay. All right. So, oh, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said it's just I, w- I would never. I, I just don't think I don't think you can really write country music anymore. And those people that are writing those that are doing those songs, you know, they grew up in Brentwood in a five hundred thousand dollar home. And I and so I just don't, none of that stuff is authentic. Oh, OK. All right. All right. So what you're talking about is um, country artists nowadays are not living what they say in their lyrics, right? No, no, not 90, 95 percent of them. All right. Well, you know, that's that's I just that's everywhere in music nowadays, you know. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. Got to face it to me. <laughs> All mm-hmm. right. So um, let me ask you this. Um, can the audience expect more videos in the future? I would say. Um, well, I did a long distance video for uh, one of the singles I released about two months ago, back before uh, I got over you. And we did that long distance. Douglas wasn't even in town. So, yeah, I think you can expect to see another video from me here in the next six months. All right. So do you have a favorite moment while performing? Um, I remember we performed in a – God, I think it was – is it Arizona? Well, the Judy Bats had this infamous song called All I Want to Do is Fuck Your Hair. And uh-huh. we would do we did that as an encore. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of the band we were touring with. And they were pretty well known. Um, this club we played at was a strip club at night. So I'm up there singing and Maxie, our tour manager. Yeah. The song is half over. Suddenly, there are two strippers next to me climbing all over me while I'm trying to sing. In front of a crowd of like 400 people, it was hilarious. Wow, <laughs> it was just it made, I couldn't hardly say I was laughing, so I was trying to sing. I was embarrassed. I was trying not to laugh. It was really, really funny. <laughs> wow. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Do you have any favorite venues, man? Um. I was trying to think. Really, I, the 930 Club in D.C. is where we used to play. We used to sell that out. We would play there two nights in a row a lot. This is the early 930 Club. There's a new one now that's much larger. But that was my favorite place. Um, it was loud. It was kind of a dive. Um, because of the way it was put together, it was – even if it wasn't packed, it seemed packed. The dressing rooms were nasty. That, but that was my favorite place. All right, all right. So um, let me ask you this. Since you don't like performing anymore, and you ain't going to do any more performances. Let me ask you this. Would there be a possibility that High School would be performing, maybe not on stage or anything, something big like that, but maybe like a live performance, like on Instagram Live, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, any live streaming platform, would that be something you'd be interested in? Um, you might see that, um, I'm recording a duet with a local outlaw renegade country dude. I'm doing a duet of uh, a John Prine song and making it dude on dude. And, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't do a if that if we don't do that live on Instagram because he does an Instagram uh, broadcast 
uh, on Saturday nights a lot of times. All right. So that was going to lead to my next question. Future collab. So give us a little backstory on how you met this um, musician and uh, how did you come up with creating this song? Oh, well, I know it's, it's a cover of, of a John Prine song. Um, I just had the idea because I was sitting there watching his his broadcast, his live feed, and uh, I ran it by him, and I've known him for several years, and our music has nothing to do with one another. And uh, he, I just asked him if he would like to do a cover of that, and he said he thought it was a great idea. That's amazing. All right. So, favorite collaboration? I don't know how much collaboration you have since your whole time doing music, but if you could elaborate and let the audience know, and maybe they should check out their music too. Well, I'm try- I really have not collaborated with anyone. That's not anything I've usually done. That's why I'm kind of excited about to do this thing with Brandon. All right. Okay. So let me ask this. If you could collaborate with any band or artist, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Mm. Oh, I'm trying to think. Wow, that's difficult. Um I would like, I, if I had to do a collaboration, if I could do some songwriting, I think that Dido and myself could write some really pretty songs and sing them together. That'll never happen. Wow. But. Uh, that's amazing. Hey, that's the first, um, we haven't ever had that um, actually come up, but I say, you probably even mentioned Dido. So, um, what would be the best advice you would give the youth? If you would have to tell the youth anything, what would you tell them? Well, just to, when you're writing music, write music for yourself. Don't be writing it for other people. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, who would you say your music is targeted for? Um, I really don't have a target audience in mind when I write. I just, I, I really write music for myself more than anything else. Do you have a favorite verse that you um written? Favorite verse? Well, you know, your 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 most recent child is always your favorite child. Okay. Um right. <laughs> so I want the new song, um Old Dead Black Roses for you, the first the first verse is old dead black roses for you. They're more than you deserve. You know, it's true. Another anniversary of you being dead to me. Old black roses for you. What are your music guilty pleasures? Do what now? What are your music guilty pleasures? Um, set anything 70s. It's okay. cheesy 70s. Real, any cheesy 70s bands. All right. Um, so. If high school wasn't doing music today, what would you be doing? Any hobbies, anything you like to do outside of music? Well, actually, what I'm needing to get back to about right now is um, I'm over here cleaning up a house that needs a lot of attention, uh, flipping houses. All right. So you uh, talked about um, being a real estate agent. And um, let me ask you this. What's one of the biggest challenges doing real estate agent? Being a real estate agent. Um, really competition. There's a lot of there's a lot of agents out there, uh, and there's a lot of them are, you know, there are agents that are better than others, but uh, people don't always get that agent. Okay. All right. So, do you have any goals leading, or uh, I should say leading, because we are. Do you have any goals for 2021? Um, other than not just to list a bunch of houses and keep doing what I'm doing. All right. Best best advice you've been given. Oh, best advice to be to give. No, you've been given. Like, give me, tell me the best advice someone has given. Oh, the best advice is really from my broker when I started doing this is she said you have to find your niche and I think that's true in anything in life 
right? All right. So what would you say to any upcoming band in your local area? Um, gosh, I don't know. I would know what to say to upcoming band. I guess because I'm not a band band person. You know, I, right. I, my, my things all start kind of me by myself. Okay. All right. Well, let's go right here. What would you say to any upcoming musician that's trying to uh, do music and put out as much music as you have? Well, again, there, you know, you have to find your niche. You have to, you have to realize if you're somebody who wants to do it for a living, you're going to have to know who your audience is. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Great answer, man. Okay, all right. Um, how will your music evolve from here on out? Like, what can we expect from you? Um, probably some more processed sounds, some synthesizers, a little bit of program drumming sneaking in here and there. That's what I think you can expect from me. All right. So now, I mean, all right. So check this out. Sorry, not. Sorry. Newly released song, and this song is out on all platforms, correct? It should be out today. Okay. All right. So, um, everybody, sorry, not sorry. Newly released song, starting off 2021 with a brand new single, High School. Man, how? What is the feeling you're going through right now, man? Oh, I'm, I, well, I'm, I'm kind of upbeat all the time. So each, every day is just about the same for me. I don't ever get down or too up about anything. So can you elaborate on the song? And um, is this song going to be with an album or EP? What can we expect? No, I'm going to, um, I'm going to over the next six months, I'm going to continue to release songs just as a single every time. Uh, and this song is just really about what it, you know, it's about um, certain things that I can't change in life, uh, and even those that I can, that I'm, you know, sorry, not sorry. I'm not apologizing for them. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. High school. Sorry, not sorry. Wow. What an amazing story, man. 2021. We are starting off with an epic episode with High School. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, go look this man up. This man has a lot of creativity. He has songs from 90s going up to 2007 with his debut solo gig. So, with that being said, do you have any special shout outs you want to give? Well, I'd just shout out to. Uh... John Todd Baker and, and Greg Comer, the people that I do all my recording with, and we're going to have another good year. Go ahead and plug in all your social media outlets for everyone to follow so they can um, uh, look you up, man. Oh, um, I guess um, basically uh, Instagram. On Instagram, I'm that high school, T-H-A-T high school. Um, I am on Facebook under the name high school just my name um i think youtube if you youtube high school high school music or high school videos you'll find my channel uh which i think is just high school that's yeah but that that's the places where you can find my music and it's everywhere on spotify on spotify itunes all right ladies and gentlemen i saw so oh, don't forget. Oh yeah, I'm um, plugging your um website. Uh, www.highschoolmusic.com. Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen, is there anything that I didn't touch on that you want to speak at? No, you got it covered. All right, man. Appreciate you coming on the podcast. This is an amazing time. We got a legend in the house, ladies and gentlemen. High school. Everybody, give it up. This was Christmas Music Podcast.